why don't we start with what is a network effect? And I think if most Silicon Valley people think about it, they'll think about Bob Metcalf, the inventor of Ethernet, who proposed that the value of a communications network, he was thinking about phones and fax machines and of course Ethernet, is sort of the value of that network is the square of the number of people on that network, right? So the intuition is, look, the, the first two phones, not that useful. If everybody has a phone or a fax machine, that is exponen exponential value. So yeah. is that the right definition for a network effect? Yeah, I think at a high level, the, um, the underlying idea behind Metcalf's law is right in terms of the classical definition of a network effect would be that as um, a product or a service has more users, it becomes more valuable to all of the existing users. So Metcalf's law basically states that the value of a network is proportional to the square of the number of users who are in that network. And we think that that definition is um, oversimplified and actually just objectively incorrect if you look at a lot of just like public company valuations, especially as their networks have grown. Um, and so today we'll talk through a lot of the underlying subtleties and dynamics of network effects um, in addition to just that are additional factors to consider beyond just the number of users. Mm, that's juicy. So why don't we start unpacking it? Like what's wrong with Metcalf's law and understanding the power of network effects? So I, I think there's one, one additional subtlety here, which is like Metcalf's law, the, the, the definition of network effect is that it's a network. And I mm -hmm. think that can sometimes be slightly confusing for people. So I think you know, when Metcalf's law came around, the canonical example was the telephone network, mm -hmm. which is very simple because it's like a physical network you, that you can actually relate to. Mm -hmm. And as the concept of network effects has evolved into like more and more iterations and more and more subtlety around different types of network effect, mm -hmm. this concept of a network can sometimes get, you know, the, can, can get lost in metaphor. Um, so if mm -hmm. you look at data network effects mm -hmm. where, you know, the value is actually the, like data accrues to a particular place or to a particular company and then that can make the, the product more valuable. It actually doesn't necessarily feel like a network. It doesn't like if you visualize it, it mm -hmm. maybe doesn't look like a network, mm -hmm. um, but it still exhibits those kind of network effects. And mm -hmm. so I think the other definition, which I, I think I personally find a little more compelling is um, Brian Arthur from the Santa Fe Institute talks about it as, I think he calls it like increasing advantage, right? Mm -hmm. Or like, I, I, can, I tend to think of it as like accumulating advantage, mm -hmm. right? And it's like, is what you're building, is the product need less and less work to be more and more valuable as you go along? And you know, attaching that product or service to a network with more nodes coming into the network is like one iteration of that. But as you think about different versions of network effects, the kind of the metaphor of a network can sometimes feel a little bit strained. Mm -hmm. So on the one hand, you have things that are sort of clearly networks. They're sort of nodes attached to each other, and you yeah. can draw the computer science-y graph, right? right? Phones, fax machines, yeah. uh, Lyft drivers, Airbnb hosts and guests, right? And you're saying, no, there's like more subtlety. So a da data network effect is something we hear from machine learning startups all the time, right. which is if I have 100 customers and I can listen to all their customer support calls, then my models will be better right. and make better predictions, and therefore I have a data network effect, and so yeah. that's a little harder to yeah. visualize. Right, yeah. but, but both are kind of accumulating advantages business. Yeah. Both, both businesses will get better and better as the business grows. Yeah. I sort of push back against that definition of accumulating advantage mm -hmm. as being the sign of a company having network effects because I think accumulating advantage is a little too broad and encompasses mm -hmm. many more effects beyond just the network effect. So mm -hmm. scale effect companies that have economies of scale are also examples of accumulating advantage where for instance like Amazon because of that huge upfront fixed mm -hmm. cost investment they also right. accumulate an advantage as they get larger and can amortize that cost over many more customers. Um, so I think it's definitely true that network effects are powerful and important because there's that core flywheel and mm -hmm. it sort of implies that the big get bigger. Mm -hmm. um, but I think accumulating advantage, it's definitely present in a network effects company, but it's not sufficient to say that something 
has yeah. network effects. In other words, not all cumulative advantages are actually network effects, mm -hmm. right? So right. Yeah. scale, brand, right. longevity, yeah. right? right? All of these things, which, oh, right. I've heard of this company, therefore I'm inclined to buy their product. That's not a network effect, is what you're saying. Exactly. Well, I think, I think there's an interesting debate about whether a brand is a network effect. Oh, let's um, have that so, debate. Well, Love it. Yeah, so. I mean, there, there's a, there's a I, I think there's, I'm of two minds of this, and I think yeah. there's kind of very, very interesting arguments for and against brand as a network effect. Um, you know, the idea of if, you know, I think Heinz Ketchup is like an example, right? Mm -hmm. If I'm a restaurant, do I buy Heinz Ketchup because everybody knows Heinz Ketchup and I know that if I put Heinz Ketchup on my table, then everybody, you know, it's going to be the one, it's going to be like the focal point that everybody agrees on. Mm. And so therefore, like, people buy Heinz Ketchup, more people taste Heinz Ketchup, more people know that Heinz Ketchup is kind of like this mass market brand. So there, there's like, you know, but I think brands can mean different things. Brands can have different values. So I, I think there is a kind of open debate around whether brand is a network effect or not. Yeah. I will grant that brands have network effects through the mechanism that you're talking about. Like I think as a product becomes more ubiquitous, as a brand becomes more well known, the effect is that more people hear about it, their beliefs about it sort of solidify. Um, people actually develop a taste for Heinz ketchup and actually grow to prefer it. Mm -hmm. But when you stretch the definition of network effects to encompass things like Heinz and brands, I wonder like at what point does the concept of a network effect even become <laughs> useful? Because you could say that about not just Heinz ketchup, but like you could say that about any brand that you encounter when walking down the street. Mm -hmm. And so how useful is that concept even when you I mean everything can have network effects if you yeah. if you stretch yeah. it that far. Yeah. Right. I, I think a lot of the a lot of the confusion um, and I guess maybe like disagreement around network effects comes down to this like foundational definition, right? Of like what, you know, is a brand a network effect? You know, if we stretch the analogy that far, does it lose its value? You know, but if we exclude things like brands from the definition of network effect, then are we kind of narrowly defining it into like a box that maybe it actually encompasses more than?